Good morning. We are glad to see you. We welcome you. It was a good day to be here at McGill. We had a great crowd this morning. Everybody got up early. And it's good to see you out now for the uh, 1045. If you look on the back of your uh, worship bulletin, there's several announcements. Dr. Jamie Poe is our Deacon of the Week. She'll be reading the psalm in just a little bit. Uh, Church Council will be meeting on Monday, September the 30th at 7, so mark your calendars on that. The Church Mouse Program has begun. Uh, They meet the second uh, Sunday of the month. They met last week. They've already packed uh, the the stuff for the college students, and uh, I think we had some happy college students this week, so uh, uh, you could help out with that. Donna, let's talk about the crop walk. I just wanted to remind you about the crop walk that's coming up on the second Sunday in October, October 13th. And um, it, we um, will be in Concord this week at the Forest Hill Methodist Church, United Methodist Church on Union Street. That's where the crop walk will begin. And we are to report there at 1 o'clock to, be get, to get registered. And uh, there will be some activities, especially for the children there, and uh, before the crop walk begins. And the crop walk will begin then at 2 o'clock. And we're asked to bring uh, a non-perishable uh, food item uh, to come and to walk in the crop walk. There are three ways that you can participate. You can actually walk in the crop walk, and that means you're going to need one of the envelopes that's on the back table. So pick up one of the envelopes at the back table. You only have to put your name on the bigger envelope that's lying there. You don't have to fill out your address and all that stuff. That'll be on your envelope when you turn it in anyway. So uh, just your name is sufficient for for that. And uh, then you will ask people to sponsor you, and uh, the money will go in your envelope, and then we'll put them all together. Or uh, you can bring it back to the church by October the 13th, or you can turn it in at the actual crop walk itself when you, when you come to, to walk. You can sponsor a walker. You can check out the list that we have back there to see who's walking, and then you can go ahead and uh, sponsor one of them by giving them the, the, uh, donate, your donation, or you can give it to me and I'll get it to them, either way. And uh, then uh, you can just simply make a donation. You don't have to designate to who it might go to or anything. You can just simply make a donation to the crop walk. Uh, I appreciate you praying for the crop walk and for, especially for the safety of the walkers and for uh, the, the um, Uh, Money that we raise in the crop walk, 25% of it will stay right here in Cabarrus County. Usually, I think it goes to uh, CCM for their programs and for their uh, help with the hunger. And uh, the rest of it, of course, will go to the organization itself to support hunger in other areas. And uh, so thank you for doing that. And if you have any questions or uh, need an envelope, just come back to the back table after the service. Thank you. And the crop walk organization is one of the most efficient for making sure that actual food is bought and distributed throughout the world. It's, uh, anyway, if you need somebody to sponsor, you can sponsor me. You know, sponsor. You go. You can do about the nursery. Come and talk. Yeah. I'll come. Um, so I put up flyers around um, to sign up for nursery. I'm going to keep reminding you guys. And all you need to do, um, if you have a newer phone, you should just be able to hold up your camera if you open it and just center it on the code that's up there and it should pull up the sign up. If you're having any problems with it, please let me know and I can sign you up if you'll let me know what dates you want. Which Sunday do you want me to sign up? Any. <laughs> there is no minimum or maximum. <laughs> You can always tell a school teacher she can project that voice. Good job. All right. Good morning. Um, I'm coming on behalf of the nominating committee. First, I would like to thank my members of the nominating committee, Philip Riley, Amanda Beasley, Bonnie Clay, Alan Scott, and David Matheny. Thank you for all of your hard work. 
We did have a little bit of a task this year with getting people to um, get on certain committees, but I'm happy to announce that all committees have been filled. We have chairs, chairmen's in place for each of the committees. We have lovely volunteers. We just need more volunteers. Speaking of volunteers, we need more volunteers to help with ushering. We are in need of help for usherings on the third and the fourth Sunday. So if you would be willing to sign up to help us on the third and fourth Sunday, please let myself or Mark Caton know so that we can um, do that. We would appreciate it. Um, but on behalf of the nominating committee, we thank you for everybody's hard work. And we would, um, whenever you get your directory, you will be able to see who was placed in those positions and everything. But it's on our behalf that we um, present them to you to um, be presented for the committees. Thank you. So we received this report from the nominating committee. Any, any question? All in favor will say aye. Aye. No. So we have received the report and our directories will be ready uh, very, very shortly. The Race Together, which is a four-part series to discover more about race in the United States, will begin back here on September the 19th and they'll run through the 10th from 6.30 to 8.30. They, the last session was at All Saints and then they're coming back here from this side of town. So if you would like to be a part of that, a very appropriate discussion in uh, the greater community. We're so glad that you're here. Other announcements? We good? We good? Everybody good? I think you're good. All right. We'll Greet each other.
I invite you to join me in reading responsively our call to worship. The foolish say, there is no God. We come trusting in Jesus, the face, the voice, the presence of the God who loves us. The scoffers of our age ask, why do you seek after God? We come in this time because God's grace has spilled over in our lives. The hopeless around us think, no one cares about me. We come in this time to this place because Jesus has found us and brought us home. Amen. Let's join now in singing Be Thou My Vision, hymn number 595. Would you stand please as we sing hymn 595? Good morning. This morning I'll be reading Psalm chapter 51, verses 1 through 10 from the New Revised Standard Version, which is our custom. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. If you'll pray with me. Father God, search us and know us. You know our pain in times of trials, stress, and worry. And you know our joy in times of happiness and abundance. Help us to bring all of it to you, Lord. Father God, forgive us of our transgressions that separate us from you and your perfection, and help us not to be ashamed of them, 
but learn from our mistakes so that we can glorify you. In your name we pray. Amen. Our children will come forward. Lindsay will meet them on the steps. You know, it makes me so happy when you guys are all up here together and we can learn about God. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait a second. Weren't there seven of you earlier? Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh oh. Seven. Okay, so then we had eight. We had eight. Hmm. Somebody got lost. We need to go find them. Come on. Let's go look. I think it's Kyler that's missing. Let's go look around. Here, come with me. Stay together. I don't want anybody else getting lost. Come on. Come on. Let me know if you see him. Do you see him? Where is he? Over. Oh, oh there he is. Come back. We missed you. All right. Now we have everybody. All right. Let's go back and have a seat. Okay. Phew. All right, let me count again just to make sure nobody else got lost. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we're all here. Oh, goodness, that's, that's stressful. You know, there are some shepherds that have sheep, and there was one shepherd, he had 100 sheep. And then one day he counted them, and he only counted 99. And what do you think? He said, oh, well, I've still got 99 sheep. No problem. That's fine, right? No, he went and he found that lost sheep because that sheep was just as important as those 99 other sheep. Yes? I know, that's pretty bright, isn't it? So God is our shepherd because sometimes, you know, we might get lost off of the path that follows him. But you know what? He reaches his hand out and he said, come back. You're not lost anymore. I found you. So I want you to remember that you're following God and he loves you and he cares about you. And he's always going to come back for you, even if you get lost. Will you pray after me? Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you that you always come back for us if we get lost. Help us to always follow you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Our offertory hymn this morning is Take the Name of Jesus With You. This may be a hymn that you might want to grab a hymnal on because we haven't sung this one in a long time. And some of you may know it, but some of you may not. So uh, let's give it a shot anyway. Uh, hymn number 625. And let's stand as we sing, please.
Please pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing everyone together today safely. Please be with those that aren't able to be here today. And as we receive these tithes and offerings, please bless them to the advancement of your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you. What a beautiful perspective of life. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from Luke, Luke 15, verses 1 through 10. And indeed, I do read from the New Revised Standard. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and said, this, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the, God, of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And in the hearing of that word, may we find the courage to live that word out in our lives. May we pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for the opportunity of being together. We thank you that we can worship here in this place, that we can share our concerns, our joys, our cares, our sorrows. We're thankful that you have made us family. And as we have gathered together, we do remember those who are hurting, those who are sick. We lift up to you in a special way, Jim Pittman and Martha House in the hospitals. We know that you are there, that your healing hand is there, and we thank you for that, for you are the great physician. And we continue to remember others, others who are undergoing tests, others who are undergoing and suffering with debilitating illnesses. And we know that you are there, for you are a friend that is closer than a sibling. This day we remember those who are hurting in our world, a world that is fraught with strife and anger and hate but a world in which you have called us to be peacemakers, that you have called us to do what it is that we can do to make this world a better place. Oh, Lord, strengthen us in our resolve. Open our eyes to the needs about us. Open our hearts to you. We remember even now how you once taught us to pray and so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We come in the Gospel of Luke to a very interesting place. There are certain things that Luke shares in his Gospels that we do not find in the other three. And these three parables that he introduces to us today are one of those. It's hard in, in this world in which we live in to understand what it means to be lost anymore. I mean, we've got this lady in my car that tells me always where to go. And she keeps telling me to redirect me. Well, I need all the redirecting I can get. I take that. 
But I remember a, a simpler time when, uh, after I finished seminary, we were still living, and we, we remained in Pennsylvania and worked with the Home Mission Board, and we lived in Doylestown. Doylestown's right above Philly. And Janet and I would often, because of the proximity, we would just go over to the Pennsylvania Dutch country and get lost. We would just drive, we would find the covered, di uh, the covered bridges, and we would just go. And as we go, you, some of the most wonderful memories still remain of, of barefooted Amish children playing outside and beautiful farms. Now, we didn't particularly like to go in the spring because there was that wonderful smell of manure everywhere. But in the fall, the fall was a good time to go. But we would just spend the day not knowing exactly where we were, just being lost but then eventually finding a highway that led somewhere. Jesus tells us these parables about lostness. And it begins because Jesus is being criticized for the company he keeps. He's being criticized because he goes to be with people of the world, tax collectors and sinners. Oh, my, oh, my. And we know all the adages because we teach some of them to our children. Birds of a feather flock together. One bad apple spoils the bunch. But Jesus didn't quite grasp that. He went to where people were, as himself. He went and he ate and he drank with them and he got to know them and he told them that the kingdom of God was at hand and the kingdom of God was breaking in upon them. And yet, some people didn't like that because it's always a matter of perception. Like I told the 8.30 crowd, I said I was going to tell this at 10.32, and I will. Uh, Lauren is the perfect middle child. I mean, she really is. Uh, She's good at negotiating with her older sibling and her younger sibling, and, and she does well. And uh, she thinks we did a really good job raising her. But she has serious doubts about our ability with the other two. It's a matter of perspective. Where we are and what we do, and these scribes and the Pharisees, how dare Jesus talk to these people? How dare he violate the holiness code? How dare he get so close to unclean people? Oh, we are so sanitized ourselves that we don't understand even the world. So Jesus tells them a parable, a parable about need, a parable about people, a parable about us. And he says, there was a shepherd. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? That's not a rhetorical question. Because the answer is, not one of you. Not one of you. You're not going to leave the 99 and go after that one because that one is collateral damage. That one is acceptable loss. You can do without the one. That is not a make it or break it deal. And they know that. They knew that. They're quite happy. But this is not God's arithmetic. This is not the math that God uses. God is telling us through these words of Jesus that every person matters. Every person has hope. Every person, every person, as I said, that you look at is the face of a person that God loves. No matter the shade of their skin, no matter the accent that they have, no matter the language they speak, they are a person of worth. 
And this shepherd that we know as the good shepherd takes the risk of leaving the 99 to find the one because the one is also important. And we would be wise to remember that ourselves. And the shepherd comes back, and what is the first thing he does? He finds it, he puts it on his shoulder, and he rejoices. He rejoices because he has found it, and he goes home. And what's the next thing he does? He calls together his friends and his neighbors, the same thing, rejoice with me. I have found my sheep that was lost. It's a matter of having a party. It's a matter of rejoicing. It's a matter of celebrating. Our problem is that we're too caught up in condemning that we forget to celebrate. We forget the goodness of the life that God has given us. And we forget the importance of those about us. And as we think of of these parables and and the people that are around it, 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 it is not... The publicans, the sinners, the tax collectors that are lost here. For they have been found now in the presence of Jesus. They have been found and they have listened to him and they're responding to him. Those who are lost are the righteous. Because they put another word in front of that. Self-righteous. And how lost They are. What does it mean to be lost? I think it means to lose our bearing. I have shared with you very intimately the details of Janet's Alzheimer's and our our journey with it. One of the most heartbreaking things that was said this year was I was with her and she looks at me and she says, I am so lost. And I thought, how horrible. To know that. And that's why I I think how sad sometimes how we treat people, especially with with this disease. We, We warehouse them. We put them in places where we can forget them and we don't want to be bothered with them. And we say, well, I don't want to remember you that way as if they could have any power over the way They are. She knew she was lost. But at the same moment, she also knew she was loved. And in that love, she was found. The last several weeks have been a a different dimension of of this story and this journey and uh, But yesterday, when Lauren and I were visiting her, she was a little agitated. She's been a little more agitated. She looked at me and said her first complete sentence in about a week. And she said, I'm so glad to see you. That's really what it's about that we remember and we share our presence in a world and that we are there. And, And this shepherd went to that one and brought him home. And, and then he says, there was this lady and she had 10 coins and she lost one. And, and remember this was before social security. Let's don't get talking about Medicare, because I like Medicare. 
She lost one. This was her security, and she swept the house like no money's business. When we were younger and we started cleaning the house, one of the kids would always come out, who's coming to visit us? <laughs> this woman swept it because she needed to find it. It wasn't absolutely necessary or not, we don't know. But she needed to find that coin, and she did. And again, she rejoiced. And not only did she rejoice, she called all of her friends. She texted them. No, she didn't text them. She picked up her iPhone. No. She called her neighbors, talked to them, and said, I found it. And I rejoice. In the third part of the parable, which we'll get to later, is the parable of the prodigal and his brother. And we're reminded, even there, that both are so important. What is Jesus trying to tell us about the company we keep? He's telling us that we have to go out into this world that God so loved, and we have to see our brother, our sister, wherever they are. And we don't have to think so highly of ourselves that we cannot be merciful and loving and humble and caring. And we can't be so self-righteous that we cannot rejoice that we cannot understand that there is joy in the world. My good friend Jack Knopfsinger, who was my mentor, he was a pastor at Knollwood in Winston. Jack said he was at the hospital one day, and he was in the elevator, and uh, uh, he saw a man, and the man saw this other man. He said, aren't you a preacher? He said, oh, no, 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 please. I've just been sick for a while. What does it say? We as Christians, we have that joy, joy, joy down in our hearts. And it needs to shine through our lives. That abiding joy that loves and cares and rejoices. Not the finger a condemnation, but the arms, the arms of embrace and love. Who did Jesus hang out with? The tax collectors, the sinners, those who responded to him. Would Jesus hang out with us? Would Jesus approve of our attitude? Would Jesus share our passion? Would Jesus share our joy? By the grace of God, yes, he does. May we pray. Our Father, may we learn afresh and anew to rejoice. May we even find those special moments of grace and joy in our lives. Sometimes, dear Lord, remind us that we too are lost. We have missed the mark. We have forgotten who we are. Remind us that your love is greater than our sins. And remind us that you call us like a home and beacon to you. Oh, Lord, help us to follow you. Help us to love like you love. Help us to be, by the grace of God, like you. 
May we be your church. In the name of the one who came into this world to show us the way, the name of Jesus who is the Christ, we do pray. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Hymn number 558. Our invitation is also simple, to know that Jesus is the Lord. He is the Christ. We invite you to be a part of the fellowship and membership of this church as we work together to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world that God so loves. We invite you to open your heart to his will in your life as we stand and sing. We have reasons today also to rejoice. Kara Pollock has shared with us, me, that she wants to accept Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior and to be baptized. And we need to receive her. She'll be baptized next Sunday at this service. Do I hear a motion to receive? Second. All in favor say welcome. <laughs> All opposed? Nobody's opposed. We rejoice and we look forward to next Sunday morning in this service for a service of baptism. Any other announcements? We good? Choir practice Wednesday. Choir practice Wednesday. Come join the spirit. Really wonderful. Y'all look good up there. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Tuesday Bible study will uh, not meet this week because the books haven't come in. Uh, we're doing Adam Hamilton's uh, new book called Why, uh, which is a really good book. But... Uh, it's not like Amazon. They didn't do two-day delivery. <laughs> they did almost a two-week delivery. So um, anyway, the, the, the books will be here Thursday, so we will have our normal Tuesday Bible study starting back next, a week from Tuesday. So, and now we go from this place. We go out into the world, for this is where we will find Jesus. We will find him in the world that God so loved. And this is where we will find the church the church where it belongs, not sheltered, not citadeled, but out in the fields, working and sharing and being and loving and caring and feeding. For this is what the Lord has taught us. Go and be the church. In the name of the Father who loves us, everyone. In the name of the Son who epitomized that love. In the name of the Spirit which is that love, we do pray.
Oh